This is how I fight my battles. This is how I one more time say. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I Oh, let's give him an offering of praise this morning. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, go ahead. We can do better than that. Just put your hands together and give him glory this morning. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. Mighty Lord. 
Can we just take a moment in his presence and love him this morning? Oh, we praise your holy name. You are magnificent, God. Mighty God, mighty God, miracle working power. Need you more, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Flow, flow through us now, Jesus. desires more of you.
this morning oh go ahead just take a moment and love him we need more of you Jesus we praise you Lord we need more of you Jesus Yeah. 
led me through the fire. You have led me through the fire in darkest night, in darkest night. You are close like no other. No I was thinking this week after we had practiced this song about the goodness of God in my life and what he's done in my life and you know there's times when you go through the valleys <laughs> and I think there's some of us in here that would agree we do have our valleys but God never leaves us he is with us and if it wasn't for some of those valleys I don't know where I would be today maybe I would just be floating along and thinking, oh, I guess this is all part of life. But God, God, He is faithful. The goodness of God, amen? The goodness of God brings us through, puts us back, walks with us, teaches us, loves us, holds our hand, holds us, hangs on to us never leaves us, never forsakes us. Amen? 
Oh, I praise him this morning. I praise him. He is a good God. He's a loving father. He loves us today. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us, will follow me all the days of my life. Amen. God is running after us. He says, let me steer you. Let me help you. Let me walk you through this challenge. I'm, I'm here. We just got to let him. Amen. We got to let Jesus be who he is. Let him, when he says he's alive in us, let him be who he wants to be in your life. I just love him. I love the Lord this morning. I love him and praise him for his goodness to me. Oh God, you are so faithful. I praise you. I praise you today. Jesus. Father, I thank you that you're renewing in us. You're renewing. And I've said this word so many times this morning in my prayers. You're restoring. You're restoring us. You came, Jesus, that we would have salvation in our lives. And what you have said in your word is faithful to us. It's true. You are God and you change not. You sent your comforter to us. Holy Spirit lives in us. Oh, hallelujah. He's alive in us today. And I am so grateful, God, for the cross, for the blood that was shed, for the covenant, the new blood covenant that you have given us. Oh, hallelujah. We shout it. We shout your praises this morning. We lift you up and worship your holy name because you are a good, good father. You've been so good to us. You've been so faithful. Sometimes maybe we haven't recognized it, but you have always been there with us. And I love you. I love you for bringing us through. I love you, Lord, that we stand on the word of God this morning. It never fails. It never changes. It is with us and it is strong in us this morning. We've learned to stand on your promises. We've learned to stand on the word of God. And it is alive in us. It's working in us. And I praise you today. Hallelujah. 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 Let's rejoice one more time. Let's sing that song, the goodness of God. Let's sing it. Let's sing it from our hearts this morning. Let it be so powerful in us today who we serve and who we love. Amen. Let's do it.
Stretch your hands forward as we pray over the giving this morning. If you're here for the first time or you're at home watching for the first time, we don't go around and take up an offering. We have this at the back and people give as they come in and as they leave, but we just believe that it's important to declare the word of God over our giving. Amen. He gave seed to the sower. So he blesses the seed when it is sown. So let's just declare that. Father, we thank you right now for your seed that you have given into our lives. We thank you for your presence that we have felt here this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your presence that we're going to feel the rest of the day. We pray that you would bless every gift, that you would bless every giver. Father, those that didn't have to give, give seed to them to sow. And Father, we just pray that where it sits, where it's going, and where it came from will be blessed and multiplied for your kingdom. That is what it's for. It's all for your kingdom. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to get you to stand with me just one more time, if you would. We're going to partake of the Lord's Supper together this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Just while they're passing that out, the Word of God says, When they were gathered together, and I'm just going to paraphrase these scriptures, but he said when they were gathered together, the apostle instructed them on how to partake of the Lord's Supper. Here's what he said. He said, do it like Jesus did it. Everyone say, do it like Jesus did it. Just a side note, wouldn't our lives be a whole lot better if we used that motto in everything that we did? Do it like Jesus did it. And how Jesus did it was he explained to his disciples that if you are one of mine and you partake of this, you are partaking into your life everything that the blood of Jesus is and everything that his broken body was for. How many knows there's healing in his blood? There's salvation in his blood. There's deliverance in his blood. The blood of Jesus 
was shed to reconcile us unto himself. And so when we partake, we're not just drinking a little cup of juice or taking of a cracker. That's what it feels like in our hands. But what we are doing is we are partaking of everything that Jesus accomplished. Do you believe that? Amen. What was his body broken for? His body was broken for your healing. Hallelujah. For your reconciliation. His blood was shed for your peace. For your calm. For, for completeness and fulfillment in your spirit and in your life. And so I know sometimes, some places, this is done just as kind of a, a routine and a ritual. And, oh, we just do this because it's X Sunday on the map. But I can tell you something. Here at Chinook, we don't do it just because it's X Sunday on the map. We do it because Jesus Christ gave everything so that you could have everything. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. That's why he did it. He did it so that you could have everything. And so that the fullness, everyone say that with me, the fullness. I want you to understand this, and we're going to read a scripture. But I want you to understand that the fullness of Christ is available to operate in you. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Jesus. Shelley, would you read 1 Corinthians 11 and 24? For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Thank you, Jesus. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. That word remembrance, just before we partake in Kelvin praise, that word remembrance, because he says it again the next time, just so you know, comes from the Greek word menome, which means put back together. Do this, he said on the cross, do this, putting me back together in you. Oh, Jesus, we thank you for what you've done for us. We thank you that your, your body was broken so that we could be whole, so that you could put us back yes, together, Jesus. Father. We thank you for this wonderful and great plan that you gave your life for, you sacrificed your body for. And we do remember Jesus now as we partake of the bread in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's put our declaration up there this morning. Let's just declare this over our lives as we partake. And declare it. Don't whisper it. Declare it over your life. Go ahead. In receiving this cracker, I am not simply receiving a cracker. I receive his body that was broken. I receive all it was broken for. I receive healing. I receive strength. I receive all of the blessings of God in my body. I join myself to his body and I fulfill his purpose by walking in all that he walked in. I am made complete in him and he is made complete in me. Let's just worship him as we partake this morning. Thank you, Jesus. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. Let's declare this together this morning. Go ahead. In receiving this drink, I not only receive this juice, but I receive his blood that was shed. Receive all it was shed for. I am redeemed from sin. I am redeemed from the effects of sin. I am free from sorrow. I am free from depression. I'm free from anxiety. I am his body, and he and I are one in the spirit 
I'm made complete in him, and he is made complete in me. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. For your blood that you shed for us. Mm. To atone for our sins, Lord, as you've removed them as far as the east is from the west. We thank you for your life-giving blood in thank us. You, that we live life and life more abundantly. We yes, thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, that by your stripes we are healed. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we are whole emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally, God. We thank you for this price that you've paid, Jesus, for yes, us to Jesus. live Hallelujah. in your goodness. In Jesus' name. Man, let's just worship as we partake this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just while they gather up the cups, just lift a hand and sing, Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Sing it again. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Singing, oh, the blood of Jesus. Jesus, it washes white as snow. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You can be seated this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just a couple of announcements, and then we're going to get Dave to come and greet us. They're headed to Mexico this week, and so they're going to, he's going to come and greet us and, and uh, kind of give you an update on what they're doing when they go. Don't forget, obviously, our regular services Sunday at 10 o'clock. Connections, the second and fourth Thursdays of every month at 7 p.m. Our next one is on the 23rd. Everyone say the 23rd. Amen. And we have been invited to Linda and Ed's house to do connections on the 23rd there. So we're excited for that. Um, if you don't know how to get there, ask. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Don't forget our Today I Ate program. Dave's going to mention that again and continue this week to pray as they travel uh, to Mexico to do the Lord's work and to, to see a great move of his spirit there. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand as he comes this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's a delight to be able to uh, share and Bit of an update of, of our next step. It's been, we moved to Mexico to live actually in 1996 and uh, over the years we, we, we lived there and then we, and over the years we made connections down there and so uh, that kind of ended of our living there and so then the Lord in uh, back in 08 opened the door for us to come and serve here and so, um, but our time has uh, allowed us to commit to still go to Mexico and uh, we did two weeks in the spring and two weeks in the fall. And then, of course, uh, in three years ago next month, uh, COVID shut us down and we came back early. And, but we've maintained our connection with the uh, main church in San Felipe. And, uh, but thank the Lord, he's opened a door and we're, we're able, because we're not vaccinated, we're flying directly over the states and we're able to fly directly into a community called Loreto, and uh, which is further south than we've ever been on the Baja Peninsula. And uh, we uh, fly there next Saturday and uh, rent a vehicle and we'll stay overnight in Loreto because it's 260 mile drive to Guerrero Negro, which means black warriors. So your homework is to, while we're away is to practice Guerrero Negro. And uh, <coughs> so there's a church plant there. And uh, so we drive 260 miles next Sunday, and uh, they're the same time as us. So one o'clock next week after the drive, I am preaching. So uh, they've pushed the service back. So they're going to break break me in real good. 
And so, but after that, we're going to be Guerrero Negro, Ensenada, uh, San Felipe, and Mexicali. And uh, I am going to be speaking 13 times, and Beth five times. And uh, we get a few, two or three days to, to relax. But one of the things, of course, we're looking forward to in San Felipe is is being a part of the feeding program that uh, you, many of you have, uh, you're aware of because of the Pepsi tin, uh, which by the way is almost at donations since we put it up there, $5,000 over the, over the uh, years. And for other donations that have come in, those of you who have given me uh, cash to send and take down, we are at $20,010. So that is all gone to look after these kids in, in uh, San Felipe. And so COVID kind of shut the feeding program down. And so mothers would come, as most of you know, mothers would come and uh, pick up uh, grocery bags. And so they would have enough food, uh, food to feed their families for the, uh, for the week and sometimes for two weeks. So we're looking forward to going down and being a part of that as well as sharing. Uh, Beth will be sharing at what they call a ladies cafecito. Cafecito means little coffee. And that's a ladies ministry. And Beth in the past has ministered to 150 to 200 ladies. And she'll be doing that twice in uh, San Felipe. And uh, at, once in San Felipe and the other one in Guerrero Negro and Sonata. And so we're just looking forward. God has opened the door again. And uh, it's kind of interesting. I, I love routines. And I love coming from the north because I know how to land in San Diego and drive across the border. I've done it lots of times, and now I have to come from the south. And I've never done that before. I'm driving a highway I've never done before. And so it's kind of interesting, change and, and the differences. But I'm convinced, and others have shared with me, I believe God is going to do something unique through our time there that uh, for his glory that we have not done before. And so... We are, thank you for your prayers for that, and uh, what I have is I've put together a schedule that if you have email and you would like to get a copy so you can pray for us each day, I will be happy to email that to you this week before we go. And so you can see the variety, men's la meetings, ladies' meetings, uh, cafecito preaching on Sunday, discipleship classes, uh, new believers class, and so we've got a smorgasbord of opportunities to share and uh, we're just so blessed because Mexico has been part of our life for over 25 years. And so we're so blessed uh, for the support, ongoing support from Pastor Shane and the elders here. And uh, many of you, all of you I trust. And so thank you for uh, <clears throat> continuing to be a part of what we're doing. And uh, while we enjoy some uh, well-cooked uh, Mexican meal after, after the service, ask questions. Uh, we'll be happy to uh, update you with anything that you might be interested in, and uh, yeah, so we're just, we're blessed to be a part, because that's, that's who we are, that's, that's our life, uh, as well as being Canadians, we're grateful to be ambassadors, representing you as we go to Mexico, so God bless you, thank you so much, and if you have any, any coin or any um, paper stuff, or it can be plastic now, uh, that you would like to give me a Pentecostal handshake with, I'd be happy to put it in my pocket. And I guarantee you every cent goes to the ministry in, in San Felipe and the kids ministry. So thank you. Bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to pray with them uh, at the end of the service that God would give them a, not only a safe trip, but a productive trip, a blessed trip. Amen. See God do what God does. How many knows God is in the blessing business? Amen. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 2. Hallelujah. Lord, just put this word in my spirit this week so I know it's for somebody or somebody's here and watching online. And while you're going there, I just wanted to say how much we do appreciate uh, both everyone that is here in person on Sunday morning and everyone that watches from online, we just appreciate you being here with us and, and worshiping with us. I know we get stories of people that are watching online that while we're worshiping, they have groups that are in their living room and they're worshiping with us. And while we, when we do communion, they do communion with us. And so isn't it great to be in a world 
that we can do something here and bless somebody thousands of miles away at the same time. So God is, God is so good. Um, I just want to talk about God's reaction when I cry. Everyone say, when I cry, God does. Hallelujah. God's reaction when I cry, not just physically cry, but when I cry out to him, when I call out to him, his reaction to that. Because if he doesn't react, we're wasting our time. Right? There's a scripture in the Bible and it talks about the other gods in comparison to our God and it speaks of the fact that, and I'm paraphrasing, but they have eyes and don't see. They have a mouth that can't speak. They have hands that can't reach. They have feet that can't move. But our God is a living, breathing, moving God and when we cry out to him, when we call out to him, regardless of the situation, the reason we call out is because we have faith and trust that there's going to be a reaction. Amen? And yes, that comes from faith, but it also comes from experience. It also comes from hearing that God has done it in the past and that he is a living, breathing God. And, and the importance of understanding how he reacts gives us an understanding of how we need to respond when we bring our calling to him, when we call out to him, when we bring our needs to him, understanding his reaction and understanding his response to that is vital because it gives us a few things. Patience. Everyone say patience. Amen. It's funny, when I say faith, everyone shouts faith. Or if I say, everyone say, God is a blesser. But when I say, God gives us patience, it gets much quieter. <laughs> it goes from faith to patience. <laughs> but it gives us patience. It gives us understanding. It gives us the ability to differentiate between our time frames and God's time frames. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to get into this this morning, but I say it all the time, I say it again. There is very few things I believe more important for a child of God to understand and to get a revelation of than the fact that time means nothing to God. So important to understand. Because when you understand that he's outside of time and not trapped by time, you can understand how he sees the end from the beginning. And how he can be working on your answer before you know what the question is. Hallelujah. That's hard for us to wrap around, but before you even know you have a need, he's already working on your solution. Actually, if we want to be very exact and we want to be very particular and precise, we would say, before you ever got sick, he already provided healing. Already done. Calvary accomplished everything that there is to accomplish. Amen. We just got to catch up. Look at the one beside you and say, you just got to catch up. Look back at them and say, you're just slow. Catch up. <laughs> Amen. Verse, two, verse 23 of chapter 2 of Exodus. Hallelujah. We're going to peel apart a couple of scriptures here. I'm going to show you four, re four things that God does in reaction and relationship to when you call on him. Four things that God does. Now it happened, verse 23, in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage and they cried out. And their cry came up to God because of the bondage. And I love the first two words of verse 24. So God. 
Everyone say, so God. They were in captivity. The old king that had a little bit of patience and favor with them died. The king that remembered Joseph died, and a new king took his place, and their bondage and their affliction became magnified. It became exponentially magnified. And the Bible says they cried out to God from their bondage, so God. Everyone say, so God. I want to stop there for a minute and let you know every time you call to him, he reacts. Hallelujah. Every single time you call to him, there is a heavenly reaction from him. Everyone say he reacts. So the first thing I want to show you that, that he does, the Bible says, so God heard their groaning. I think this is important, and you can take that one down now if you want. I think this is important to understand. God always hears. Hallelujah. God always hears. One of the greatest lies that the enemy will tell you and try to convince you of is that nobody hears when you call. God's busy. God's got stuff he's got going on. God has too many things to concern himself with your little need. How many in here has ever heard that lie in your head? Oh, what you need, that's so small. There's so many bigger things that God's got to worry about. So much bigger things that he's got to concern himself without. But let me, let me explain something to you and hopefully this sinks in. How many believes it's as easy for God to heal cancer as it is a headache? How many believes that it's as easy for him to save somebody who has lived a, an impeccable moral life as it is for him to save a murderer or a rapist or a child molester? If that is the case, if him fixing it is just as easy, big or small, then guess what? Him caring about it is just the same, big or small. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody needs to hear this. Stop not going to God with your problems because you think your problem is too small and insignificant. If it matters to you, it matters to Him. Hallelujah. I want you to say that with me. If it matters to me, it matters to God. He is touched by the feeling of your infirmities. So when you are affected, it moves him. Hallelujah. Because his love for you is not based on the size of your problem. It's based on the size of his love for you. Hallelujah. He hears. He hears. Watch what Psalms 34 and 17 says. The righteous cry out, and what? And the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. If we don't get, and I'm going to move on because this is very simple stuff this morning. If we don't get the fact that he hears us, and we can't receive and accept the fact that he always hears us, nothing that comes after will be relevant. Because if you don't think he hears every time you call, you don't think that he's going to react every time you call. But when you understand that his ear is tuned to your heart, oh, hallelujah. His ear is tuned to the cry of your heart. His ear is tuned to what is affecting you on the inside of who you are. And so the size of your problem does not affect the size of God's reaction. God's reaction, he said, let there be, and the universe popped into existence. He didn't work any harder to create the whole universe 
then he works to put his arm around you and comfort you in a time of sorrow or give you peace in a time of turmoil. He hears. Everyone say that with me. He hears me. Hallelujah. Let's go back to verse 24 again. Everyone say, and God. Hallelujah. So God heard their groaning, and God, somebody say, and God, remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Look at the one beside you and say, God never forgets a promise. Hallelujah. I want you to say that again with some vigor. God yeah. never forgets a promise. Our promises, can I just put it this way? A promise is only as powerful as the memory of the one that gives the promise. If your memory is as long as your arm, that's how effective your promise is. You ever, you ever heard a kid promise that they were going to do A, B, C, and D, and then a week later you realize that it never quite came to fruition? You ever met a person that said, I absolutely promise 100% I'm going to do A, B, and C. Now their intention is pure, their intention is good, but a promise lasts as long as your memory does. If you forgot that you promised it, you'll forget to fulfill the promise. Right? The mind of God is a steel trap. The mind of God is without forgetting. There is only one thing that God has ever forgotten since the foundation of the world, and that is your sin. Hallelujah. The only thing that he has ever forgotten was everything that you did before you came to him. Everything else he will never forget. Hallelujah. The promises of God are what? Yea and amen. Watch what, what Psalms 105 and 8 says. He remembers his covenant forever. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations. Everyone say he hears. And he remembers. Hallelujah. He remembers his promises. He remembers his promises. You see, when we come to God and we, quote, remind him, we aren't reminding him so that he remembers. We're reminding him and letting him know that we remember. Hallelujah. When we come to God and declare, and the word teaches us to do this all through the scripture, you find men and women that, that did it, that come before him and make a case for what they need. Job, the Bible said, Job said, I will go before him and plead my case or plead my cause. When the prophet of God came to Hezekiah and said, get your house in order because you're going to die and not live, as the prophet walked away, Hezekiah turned to the wall and he said, wait a minute, time out. I have held to your promises. I have kept my heart pure before you. I have done everything that you said. And you said if I did these things, you'd bless me with long life. Now I'm coming to remind you that I have kept my part of the covenant. And God said, go back and tell Hezekiah that I've added years to his life. Did God forget his promise? No. But Hezekiah reminded God that he remembered the promises of God. God never forgets. Somebody say he never forgets. His promises are yea and amen. They are settled. God does not ever have a moment where he thinks to himself, I wonder what I promised this guy. I wonder what it is I promised. When we come to him and say, God, your promises declare A, B, C, and D, we're just letting him know, I haven't forgotten what you told me you would do. And when we bring that to him, what does he do? 
he fulfills his part of the covenant. Every promise is a covenant that God makes. I want you to understand that. Every promise in the book is a covenant that God makes. That's why he says the promises of God are yea and amen, comma, to them that believe. So the covenant is, my promises are settled and nothing can change them. Your part of the covenant is, believe in what I said. His part of the covenant is, He'll bless you beyond what you can imagine. Your part of the covenant is, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Right? He never forgets. How many in here have ever had promises from God that the enemy lied to you and said God has forgotten what He promised you? God never forgets. Everyone say He never forgets. Hallelujah. Verse 25. Everyone say, and God. And God looked upon the children of Israel. Not complicated. Very easy. God sees you. I know that's simple, but boy, when you feel alone and deserted and like nobody cares, it is sure good to know that God sees you. He sees you. Somebody say, he sees me. Oh, hallelujah. Let's lift a hand and love him just for a moment this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. Somebody needs to understand that just because the enemy lies to you and tells you you're alone and that nobody gets it and nobody cares and nobody understands what you're going through, that is a lie from the enemy. God sees you. He sees you. Not just sees the shape of your body, not just sees what you look like, he sees to the inside of you. He sees every aspect of you. Hallelujah. He sees what you're going through, how what you're going through is affecting you, how what you're going through is affecting your home and your family. He sees it all. And when God sees something, it's not like a person seeing something. He sees through the facade. He sees through the smile. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody hear me. He sees through the smile. He sees through the fact that you say everything's all right, but everything isn't all right. He sees through that. He sees through the fact that somebody says, how was your day? And you say, great, even though you've gone through hell all day long. He sees through that. He doesn't see what your mouth says. He sees what your heart feels. Hallelujah. He sees you. Look at the one beside you and say, he sees you. He sees you. Hallelujah. Watch what 1 Peter chapter 3 and 12 says. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Wow. Now sometimes that'll make you nervous, because sometimes we get in situations we wish he didn't see. How many has ever said or done something or reacted in a way and it hit your heart? Oh, God sees this. And you're like, oh, man. He sees. Everyone say he sees. He remembers. And he hears. But this is what I want to talk, this is what I want to kind of extend for a moment. Go back to verse 25 again. It says... 
the Lord sees, the Lord looked upon the children of Israel and God acknowledged them. Everyone say he acknowledged them. Hallelujah. Would you agree that if he heard you, he saw you, and he remembered your, his covenant with you, but did nothing about it, it wouldn't mean anything? If he heard every cry that you ever made, he remembered his promises, and he saw what you were invested in, saw what you were involved in, but stayed sitting on his seat and didn't move, it would be nothing to you. But the word of God says, not only did he hear, remember, and see, but he acknowledged them. Everyone say, he acknowledged them. Now that word acknowledged comes from the original word yada. Everyone say yada. It's a verb. It's an action word. Everyone say it's an action word. And what it means is, to recognize and react. Hallelujah. When he says he acknowledged them, it means he recognized and reacted. He didn't keep the information to himself. He did something about it. He didn't look at his people and say, yes, it's sad, I hear that you're in bondage. Yes, I remember what I told you I would do, and I see your sorrow, and I see what you're going through, but I'm just going to let you hang out there, and I'm going to leave you to your own devices. You're the one that went into Egypt and then ended up in bondage, so let's, I'll just let you stay there. No, he said, I recognize your circumstance, and I'm going to react to it with the appropriate action. Oh, hallelujah. The thing we have to understand about God is that he never sits back and does nothing. Wow. There's never a moment that he looks at somebody who believes and does nothing. He may not do it the way you think he should do it. He may not do it on the clock that you think he should. He may not function in the way that you have planned it to happen. But I can promise you with 100% assurity, when he hears your cry and remembers his covenant and sees what you're up to and sees what you're going through, he is going to recognize and react to what you're going through. And his plan works. Do you know how much trouble you would be in if he followed your plans? Good Lord. There's been times in my life that I have laid out plans. We do this. Yep, you've done it too. You might not use the same words, but in here you've done it. There's times that I have laid out plans, and how many times do we do this where we lay out an idea and we say, this is what I need to happen, Lord. Now I get that you see everything, and I know that you see the end from the beginning, but I don't think you get it. This is what I need to happen, and this is how I need it to happen. And then we come to God with this prayer. Lord, work this out. <laughs> I can't be the only one who's ever been down that road. <laughs> Lord, work this out. I need A, B, C, and D to happen. Lord, I need you to. And then, and then. Then we start using his own word against him. You said, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Order these steps that I've laid out for you. <laughs> mm. 
Remember when Joshua was getting ready to cross Jordan into Jericho? And the Bible said he went off by himself to pray and seek God's will. I feel like it's possible that in the beginning he went off by himself to let God know how, what, what God should do. Because the Bible said, as he was praying, as he was talking to God, a man showed up, a captain of the army of the Lord. And Joshua looked at him and said, Are you for them or us? And if you translate that very directly from the original, it's more like, are you here to support them or to support us? Isn't it funny how we think God's here to back our plans? And the, ca our, the captain of the army of the Lord looked jo at back at Joshua and he said, Nope. What? If you're not here for them and you're not here for us, what are you here for? He said, as a captain of the host of the army of the Lord, I'm here. I'm not here to back your plans or their plans. I'm here to get you to back his plan. Why? Because he already knows his plan's going to work because he's already been far enough ahead in time to see it done. Right? God recognizes and reacts because his plans are flawless. Isn't that what he said? He said, I know the plans I have for you. And my plans are to bless you. And my plans are to give you long life. Can you imagine in our lives, I look at my own life, and I'm sure all of us could do this. Imagine what our life would look like right now in 2023. We're blessed, we're highly favored, we're walking in the abundance of God. But imagine what our life would look like if at every junction and point in our life, we came to God and just said, I've got no plans, what are yours? got no plans. What are your plans? Because I want to back your plans. I don't want God to react by doing what I have commanded him to do. I want him to react by looking at me and saying, if we do it your way, it's going to end in disaster. Try it my way because my way never ends in disaster. I know the plans I have for you. The steps of a good man are what? You know what that means? That doesn't mean they're commanded. That means they're put in order. That means he knows that you've messed up several times. Anybody in here, we shouldn't do this because we'll be here all day. Has anybody messed up more than five times in your life? I was going to do the Abraham method in reverse. What if you've messed up ten times? <laughs> How many messed up more times than you can punch in on your calculator? <laughs> Let's just leave it at that and call it a day. His plans and his reactions are not based on emotion. This is so important. His reaction is not based on emotion. His reaction is not based on what has just taken place. Oh, hallelujah. You've got to get this one. His reaction is not to the situation. It's to the call of your heart. How do I know? Because he's already conquered everything. He's already defeated everything. 
The only enemy that you have that feels like he has authority is Satan. Let me tell you something about Satan. He has been defeated in every realm that exists. Oh, glory to God. There absolutely should have been more, to, more than two amens to that. He has been defeated in every realm of existence. In heaven, he rose up and said, I think I can be just like you. And in beautiful, old school, WWF Royal Rumble style, he just threw him over the ropes and chucked him out of heaven. Look at the one beside you and say, God whooped him in heaven. Then a few thousand years later, Jesus comes up out of being baptized, is led by the Spirit into the wilderness, fasts for 40 days, and at his physical weakest, the weakest that Jesus would ever be until he was crucified, Satan came in and three times said, I'll do this I'll do this, and you can have this. And Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written, and drove him back out of the wilderness. Look at the one beside you and say, he whooped him on earth. And then when Jesus had just been crucified and everyone else thought he was dead, he was just completing the job when the Bible says he went into the bowels of the earth, led captivity captive, and took the keys of death and of hell. Imagine old Satan in his office with his feet up on his desk, calling all of his top imps in. I guess we finally did it. We just crucified him. We have won the battle. And then all of a sudden, echoing through the corridors of hell, there's hollow footprints. And Jesus walks up to the gate of the office, throws the office door open, and just sticks out a hand with a hole in the middle of it and takes the keys of his own house. Look at the one beside you and say, he whooped him in hell. He's been whooped in heaven, he's been whooped in the earth, and he's been whooped in hell. If you are not afraid of him, he has no power or influence in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's got fear, lies, and intimidation. He doesn't have physical power over you as a believer because he's been beaten at every level. Why is that important? Why is that important? It's important to understand that because that helps us understand that God's reaction to your cry is not a reaction to the circumstance. Whew. You got to get that in your heart. Nothing you could ever face will ever surprise him. Nothing you will ever go through will take God by surprise. Nothing you could ever face could be anything that God has to figure out how to conquer because he has already conquered it all. So when it says he acknowledged them, when it said he acknowledged the children of Israel, it meant he recognized and reacted. Hallelujah. Do you know two of the best words that God could ever speak to me? I know. I know. God, I'm going through hell and everything around me is falling apart. I know. I know. God, no one understands what I'm going through. I know. 
God, I don't know how to get out of this thing. I know. Well, somebody take a moment and just give him praise this morning. I know. I hear you. I haven't forgotten you. I see everything you're going through. And now I'm going to react to it and do something about it. Hallelujah. God acknowledged them. What, did he, what was his reaction to acknowledgement? Exodus 3 and verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So, hallelujah. Everyone say, so God. So God. He said, so I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and a large land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the, Je the Jebusites. I've heard their cry. I've seen what they're going through. I know their sorrow. So I'm going to react to it by coming down to deliver them out of what they're going through. Hallelujah. If he just heard, and he just remembered, and he just saw, it wouldn't mean anything. But he reacts to that. He reacts to your cry. He reacts when you call out to him. Oh, hallelujah. He's a God that hears and answers prayer. When Jesus stood at the tomb of Lazarus, he said a prayer. And right even in the middle of that prayer, he added, Now I know that every time I call you hear. But I'm just saying this out loud so everyone here will know that when we call, you hear and you respond and you react. Can we take a moment just lift our hands and love him this morning? Hallelujah. I know really what we've talked about this morning has been very precise, very basic understanding of God. But it's also lie-destroying. It's lie-wrecking word from God. Because somebody needs to understand that when the devil said that God didn't hear you, that was a lie. Somebody needs to know that when your mind said he has forgotten what you've asked for, it is a lie. And somebody needs to know that when you think nobody sees you, it's a lie. He always sees you. And more importantly, when your mind says, I don't think he's going to do anything about it. Everyone say this with me. It is a lie. He always reacts. He delivered the children of Israel out of bondage in reaction to their cry. Not in reaction to the bondage, but in reaction to their cry. Because he never had to think twice over whether or not he could bring them out. He knew he could bring them out. Can I speak to everyone in this place this morning? Just stand with me this morning. Hallelujah. I want everybody to hear this.
How many in here need a physical miracle in your body? You need God to touch your body. You need God to touch your finances. You need God to touch your family. You need God to do something in your home. You need God to do something in your business, your job. I don't care what it is, your spirit. I don't care what it is. I want you to understand something this morning. And we've taken a, long, a, a road to get here. But, but, but this is the end of the road that I want you to see this morning. God is not reacting to what you're facing. Because what you're facing is already under his feet. I want to say that again because I want you to get that in your spirit. He's not reacting. If you need a healing in your body, he's not reacting to the sickness you have. He's already conquered that. He's not reacting to your anxiety. He has already given peace. He's not reacting to your depression. He has already conquered that. He's reacting to the call and the cry of your heart. Because we have a high priest that is touched or moved by the feeling of your infirmities. Now, why is it important to know that? Because I don't want you to ever think that God has got to come up with a solution. There's never a problem you can face that God has to come up with a solution. He's already got the solution. Hallelujah. He's already provided it. We partook in the Lord's Supper this morning and we took, we partook unto ourselves everything that the breaking of his body and the shedding of his blood accomplished. How many believes that on the cross he did it all? Really what happened is on the cross he conquered everything. And in resurrection he rose above everything. He conquered even death. There's nothing. Can we just bow our heads for a moment this morning? Hallelujah. There is nothing that you are facing, will face, have faced, or could possibly face, that he has not already conquered. He's won. He's not reacting to the situation. He's reacting to your heart. Because he doesn't care about the situation because the situation doesn't affect him, but you affect him. You impact him. And so, if it matters to you, it matters to him. Hallelujah. Just while our heads are bowed and while we're praying this morning. Hallelujah. I want to take a moment. And I just want to give an opportunity. If you're here this morning and you've heard this word and you have heard the lies of the enemy that have said he doesn't hear, that have said he's forgotten you, that have said he doesn't see what you're going through or even worse, he's not going to do anything about it. If the enemy has told you those lies, just stick your hand up real quick. You can put it right back down. Hmm. Hallelujah. I knew I wasn't by myself. Beautiful. We're going to take a moment right now and we're just going to declare the word of God. Hallelujah.
Now I want to give you this shot. I know the food's waiting, but just be patient. I want to give you this shot because if you're in here this morning and you want an opportunity for myself, the elders, Dave, if he would be willing to join us to pray with you over whatever it is you're facing, healing, financial, emotional, spiritual, whatever. We're going to take a moment and if you'd like for us to pray with you and, and agree with you on that, I want you to come really quickly. We're going to shut the cameras off. We're going to turn the stream off. Hallelujah. And if you want to...